my fellow Americans, uh, this is former President uh, Barack Hussein Obama, and you're listening to the Mad Titan Podcast. Uh, please be sure to support this young brother from Chicago, uh, Jay Washington, because he's a funny bastard. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. I ignored my destiny once. I cannot do that again. Even for you. I'm the only one who knows that. At least I'm the only one with the will to act on it. The Mad Titan Podcast with your host, Jay Washington. What's happening, everybody? I'm back. It's me, the resident superhero, Mr. Jay Washington, and I'm here with episode 59 of the Mad Titan Podcast. Like, yo, 59 episodes, and I actually got the right episode count on this one. I, I feel good about that. Thank you to everybody who's uh, dropped some tweets and some love about everything they heard last week, especially when I had to rock for myself, by myself for an hour. Um, I appreciate y'all. So again, you guys are getting this on Thursdays to the best of my ability. Make sure y'all have that. I have my new uh, whiteboard calendar. So I'm literally looking at it that says new Mad Titan podcast Thursday. So it means I have to record it on Wednesday because that's the last chance to get some real news in any of the shows right now. So I am not doing it alone this week. I brought back a guest and she was on here before and we almost had some words because, you know, she hella hot, hella you know, fan riffing into DC. And, you know, I'm a Marvel dude, but I still love DC. I love DC anyway. But nonetheless, a lot of people love to on the show. And so I'm bringing up back. Miss Heather J, what's happening? Hey, how are you? What do you mean we almost had words? I didn't know that. Yes, we did. You know that. Yes, you did. Yes, you I, did. W- wait, was our friendship in jeopardy? What? Oh, no, no, that wasn't in jeopardy. <laughs> no, that wasn't in jeopardy at all. That wasn't in jeopardy at all. We were about to scrap, and I didn't even realize it. I was sitting so close to you. <laughs> like I, I didn't, I didn't feel any of the energy. What are you talking I, I about? I never really did. I thought we were just, uh, you know, mutually hating each other's universes. Oh, that's what that's what we're gonna call it. Yeah. Mutually hating each other's universe. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's okay. the best. I've never heard it put that way, but okay. <laughs> all righty. Uh, but yeah, how have you been throughout all this craziness? I'm okay. I'm kind of an introvert, so I'm I'm actually not tripping too much. I just, uh, you know, poverty is, you know, not that far from the stand-up comics realm anyway. So, you know, went from having twenty dollars to having zero. So, <laughs> you know, okay. we've been we've been talking about that a lot uh, between my friends and me talking about it here. And I always, every week, I do want to make sure that I thank everybody for checking in, especially with everything that's going on. Hope, hopefully, everyone is staying safe, sane, and healthy. Because shit's gotten real now. You know what I'm saying? It's, I know it's that's gotten, right. It's gotten, you know what I'm saying? It was real as far as the seriousness of everything and what all could happen. That was always a given of being real. But now the fact that some states, including our own right now, going on three, three months, if not longer, of everything with no relief in sight. And, you know, yeah, that's frustrating because, again, I, I broke it down to people on Facebook before Juke and Media, who was a bunch of hoes. Got my yeah. Facebook account blocked block for three days. And yeah, if you want to tweet at Juke Media, tell them they own bullshit because Winston Marshall and I use clips of theirs as commentary, which is allowed by internet regulations called the Fair Use Act. Um, but I was talking about how, you know, some people are like, oh, well, we just got to stick it through and just tough it out. Like, yo, y'all don't get it. Some people don't have savings to keep going this long. Some people yeah. are going to go into debt that's unrecoverable. And I'm just gonna say it's been a couple of my white friends like, well, I've been rather go in debt than sacrifice my life or sacrifice somebody else's life. And like, yo, it ain't about sacrificing life. It's the fact that if this debt accrues as much as it's going to accrue, some people are gonna be well worse off than they ever were. That's very true. That's yeah. very true. You know, so you tell people that and they, they're like, Well, it's about protecting those of us we don't know. Look, at some point we gotta realize people have to live a fucking life. But that's neither here nor there for those who are new to the show. <laughs> no, I talk a lot of shit. I don't give a damn. And also, I get you caught up on everything that is happening in Marvel and DC, live action and cinematic universes. This is Barbershop Talk for Nerds. So if you ain't realized by now, I'm going to talk my shit. And uh, if I hurt your feelings, that is literally on you. You wow. might want to. I mean, it's because people, <laughs> listen, you know what? There's so many podcasts and shows out here, excuse me, <clears throat> that people want to be like, damn, I don't. Should they have said that? Wow. I felt they were real harsh. But I'm like, yo, if I let you know from the gate what this is, 
Like, I'm not going to try to just be completely blatantly disrespectful about stuff. I'm just going to talk about it. And, like, it just might be harsh. It might be sensitive to your auntie's ears. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not listen to it right up. You know Maybe I listen to it with your babies around. That's, that's probably the best thing I can say. <laughs> <laughs> so let's kick it off as I always do with my Marvel news. And the Marvel news of the day that topped it off, <laughs> the New Mutants has a new release date. Again. I mean, it doesn't I, everything. <laughs> I, well, we'll see. Here's the problem with this one. I think the phrase, the New Mutants in theaters, is a curse. I do too. I feel like it'll net just li- release a stream and call it a day, right? Well, they want, you know, they want the, everybody wants the billion dollars now. But here's the thing. Trolls has shown us that you can clock $300 million with video on demand releasing. And granted, it was something to be able to release to kids to keep them occupied and keep parents from going crazy, right? Yeah, those kids, they love the trolls too. But like, do you think this movie should actually come out or should it just go straight to video on demand? I think if they if they promote it properly because we're all adjusting, I, you know, we're two months into this now. I think we're all kind of adjusted to this. Mm. I think they could do it, but they have to promote it. I, to me, the movie is not getting enough promotion, and I don't know, New Mutants. I don't like the title. I never did. <laughs> Why not? not? It, because when you talk about the the mutant universe, they're not new. This isn't. You're 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 trying you're selling it like it's something new, different from what we've already seen in mutants, and it's not. It's just different. It's just not first class. It's just not X Men. So it's like I just feel like they should stop trying to. They did the same thing with the gifted. You know what I mean? It was like you guys are making this weird. It doesn't have to be weird. There are millions <laughs> of mutants. Uh, th- this is one story about some mutants, and here's another story about some other mutants. We don't have to complicate this. But if you call it new mutants now, it's like, well, what happened to Charles? It's just what happened to the old mutants? Yeah, right. What happened to the old mutants? Gonna, even though, I mean, obviously people will know if they watch Logan, but I'm just saying, I feel like the people, comic book people will get it. Non-comic book people are the ones that make these movies hit a billion dollars. It's not right. enough of us to make the movies. So if you want to appeal to people who aren't fans already of the stories, then you have to make it appealing and new, even though Benicio del Toro, I'm always here for for Benicio del Toro. But um, if they if they cast it right or whatever, but they have to market it, and I feel like they're not marketing it right. Well, I I agree to that, but also you got to remember this is the last 20th Century Fox X Men movie, right? This is right before the last movie, right before the Disney acquisition. So mm-hmm. at the same time, I think Disney just want to throw this out just to see whatever money they can get. I don't think Disney is expecting a crack a billion dollars with this shit by any means. Disney is like, fuck it, let's just get paid to get paid. Because at, at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's no, it's not a loss to them. You know what I'm saying? It's not a strike against them. This is what was, was Fox's last X-Men movie. And of course, we already know what Fox's track record with X-Men movies are. Need I go back to X-Men Apocalypse again or X-Men <laughs> Dark Phoenix? You know what I'm saying? Like, we know they fucking track record with X-Men Dark movies. Dark Phoenix wasn't that bad. That's, Apocalypse was terrible. <laughs> first of all, I hated the fact that Jennifer Lawrence had them put one coat of blue paint on her face and was yeah, like, I'm yeah, done. She, 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 was, was so, she was so over it. You could tell. <laughs> she was like, she was phoning it in the whole movie. <laughs> she was like, glue these fucking dots to my face and leave me the fuck alone, okay? Put this bitch ass wig on. Hurry up because I got shit to do. Like, she wasn't even in for the full whole eight hour, eight, 12 hour day. She was like, I got shit to do. Yeah, you okay. could tell her heart was not in it. Ollie, <laughs> you know, we only watch those movies from Michael Fassbender. Let's stop acting like it's anything else. I'm gonna be honest. I got, I got over Michael Fassbender in this shit. I was like, look. You, you, look, there's only so much that one Magneto can do. Like, I mean, you know, we we watch Magneto <laughs> for the tricks. Like, what 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 enormous metal object is he going to move this time? And this nigga moved a bus. Like, now he, pulled, like, he pulled the train out. The it ground. was the train. It was he the train the out train. the ground. That's what it was. It was the train out the ground. I but was it like, was anticlimactic after he picked up the stadium in the second one. That's what I'm saying. You can't. Have- you can't go from moving a fucking stadium to no. I'm gonna get the L real fast. Like it don't. The shit ain't ain't the the train about the ground. But no, when he was on the train and he was fighting the uh, the aliens on the train, that was kind of dope. But I just like Michael Fassbender, so I, I like his Magneto. I think he did a good interpretation of the of the character coming from uh, I, Ian keep trying or to keep trying is. to keep trying to just uh, sugar this up the way you want to say it. I feel he no, did a great interpretation. Yeah, I, think, I thought he was. I thought he was a great Magneto. I, I'm sorry, I thought he was a great man. I thought um uh the other guy, the other James guy, McAvoy. Yeah, James McAvoy. I, was, I can never 
it's something about his face. I know him as an actor, but his name will not stick in my brain. I don't know why. <laughs> I think this nigga's face. This nigga's face is... It's because he's not hot to me. I can tell you it's because he's not hot to me. I <laughs> See? And, and that's the root of the whole thing with the Magneto shit. It's like, I know that why... That bitch is so fucking fine, man. He's so fine. <laughs> and so you was like... uh. His acting was amazing. You wanted to he see had Magneto. Me. He had me in first class when, you know, when he put the, the, the medallion in old boy, Kevin Bacon's head. I was like, I love him. I love him. He's so sad. I just want to hug him. I just want to be there for him. So, they don't get him. They don't understand. Because I'm black and I get it. I know what it means to be different. <laughs> I'm holding my fucking head right now. It's like, Baby, I understand your struggle, baby. I understand. I'm here. Come nurse on knees. Like, shit the fuck. Mutant rights, civil rights. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, we'll see if this shit actually comes out August 28th. Uh, Marvel. That's too long. They've been holding on to this for too long. They should have that. August tell- 28th. Jesus Christ. If they tell us this motherfucking movie is now coming out in 2021, I'm like, yo, just burn it. Don't even I try know. to. This movie- Release it to tell the bacon made for TV movie. Just put it on channel. See, put it on CBS on Sunday night. <laughs> 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 Says sell it, Mr. CBS. Let them go. Do what they do. Why is it taking so long? The movie's done. <laughs> the movie's so been done. Like, here's the problem. They couldn't even do reshoots now if they wanted to. I know. Because Macy Williams has grown up. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was a child, child when she filmed this. <laughs> She's like, I got breasts now, y'all. This not gonna work. By the time this shit come out, she gonna be a mother. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Raising a family. Fuck around. All right. Okay. So, so Marvel can now, Marvel Studios can now get, go back to production in the United Kingdom. So if you haven't heard, the UK is they're made they've made the decision to allow high-end television and films to resume as soon as safety measures have been put in place by their employers. So the UK's Department for Digital Culture, Media, and Sport, they're real hyper to get this shit started. And this is what a spokesperson said. Quote, the government is working closely with the screen sector to understand how different pri- type of productions can comply with social distancing guidelines and give confidence to the t- people in the TV and film industries that there are always safe ways in which they can return to work. Now, Marvel Studios is planning to shoot Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Ant-Man 3, and Moon Knight in the country which by the way tell me who the fuck moon knight is like we would probably have to wait until you know san diego comic-con this year can you just let me know if it's either keanu reese or shia labeouf so i can move on with my day like uh, i mean <laughs> those are the only two choices <laughs> i can think right now could be mark Spector. i don't think you could throw anybody else and make you go well you know what no uh-uh. um I don't think I would mind seeing Keanu, but I think using Keanu is kind of a waste. He could be somebody way better. I'm sorry. So, so are you okay? So you say he could be let's, Reed Richards? Let's leverage, let's leverage. Let's leverage his 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 star power. Oh, could he be Reed Richards? Wow, he's. I mean, he's kind of. Keanu looks great. Don't get me wrong, but he's, he's looking kind of. I mean, I don't yeah. Go and say it. Go and say Reed it. Richards fifty seven. <laughs> Motherfucker look kind of old in the face. Great. He looks great. I mean, he looks great for his age, but I don't know. I got the, I don't know. I just pictured Reed. I, you know, I like the one British dude they had that was playing him, the one that plays on that show, Liar. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, you know who I want? I, the I, right I get... blend of nerdy, nerd, handsome and nerd. <laughs> Okay, he had this swagger. It was a genesis His quoi. I mean, people like pretty things, Jay. It's not my fault. I ain't saying nothing wrong with it. You said I like pretty things too, but like the rumor going around is that it will be John Krasinski and Emily Blunt as Reed Richards and Sue Storm. Like, because Disney mm. loves them. Disney loves them. I like what- Emily Blunt, but she's a little long in the tooth, too. John Krasinski, <laughs> man. John Krasinski remind me he like he looked like he would be a live action rock, wreck and Ralph to me like he just <laughs> something about his face is just what he got a blue collar face he do he got a blue collar face he don't have an Ivy League face no he don't have an Ivy League face he has a yeah. oh my work, god he has There's... a working man's face so so oh shit so I just want to announce who Moon Knight is but if they do get started the weird thing about when it comes to films now, when they keep talking about the social distancing guidelines, every movie cannot have every actor or TV show cannot have every single actor six feet apart. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. We, but I think this is just because, I think this is just until, because I was reading an article yesterday, I think this is just until they can get the daily, the daily testing kits um, accessible. 
obviously the wealthy will have them first. Of so course. So if they get if they get access to a daily testing kit, I think they'll be able to just go back to normal because it, it, people instead of getting on set at six a.m., you're gonna have to get on set at like five and do and you know stand in line, get tested, take your temperature, mm-hmm. and um and keep it moving. That's probably just the best way to to go. Just make sure everybody you know they're gonna do temperature checks because you're right. I mean, how many you know how many single shot close ups can you have? Right. Like, look- I, need, I need to. Be, I need to. I need to hug my wife. I need to see where I'm my wife. <laughs> like I need to know what's going on around me. Like, don't do that to me, especially yeah. with a movie with movies that you know are supposed to be action based. Like one of the things I will say, and me and my buddy who works in television right now was like, "Yo, extras on set. If you sign up for central casting in Los Angeles, you might want to look for another job." Yeah, I think it's going to, I think you, I think you're going to take more of your time. I like I, I really think that I don't think it's going to be like any movie concert scenes where they just need masses of people. But Damn. I do think they I think they're going to use oh I mean if they're smart they would just use old footage if they could. But I definitely think it's going to be like oh where you would normally only be here for 10 hours you're going to be here for 12 because we need we need 2 hours for y'all to stand in line and get tested and therm- and thermometer check. It's going to be one person putting on eight costumes playing an extra in eight different scenes. Yeah, cuz once once we got you oh you know you could be the mailman. You're gonna <laughs> you be gonna, the, it, it's about to be like a 1930s movie. Okay, you're going to be uh, everybody. Tomorrow I'll come back and be the hostess at the restaurant. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it'll be good work for somebody. I think I think some talent's going to emerge out of this too. Oh, of course. Somebody's gonna, somebody gonna end up getting on because they was just healthy. the extra. They the was just, extra. <laughs> they was the extra. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't, I ain't carried the disease. Nobody. I came in here like you know. I was working. I was strong. I brought. I went to the Salvation Army and bought ninety thousand dollars worth of workouts. My credit cards <laughs> are worth. I mean, worth the worth the clothing because my yeah, credit I'm card good. is now maxed out. I got all type of costumes. So what did you need me to be? Do you need me to be in the nineteen twenties, the twenty twenties, the nineteen eighties? Well, I'm, 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 I'm a flapper today. Okay, okay. All right, <laughs> cool. cool. Let That's me get fine. my garter belt. I got my garters. It was like I got my garters. Oh, I got to do burlesque. I got that already on standby. Why you right. got that? Mind your own business. I got OnlyFans. You be like, okay, right. <laughs> do what you do. Uh, so the black one of the Black Widow actors has teased a Taskmaster secret identity in the movie, and it might be a bit of a spoiler. So he, we wondered who was playing a Taskmaster. Nobody knows. We just know what we've seen from the trailer. Like he can fuck people up. Like dude studies you, knows exactly what you're doing, and bam, right? Right. So the villain, people thought the villain would be originally Red Guardian or even Melina uh, Vostokov, but the candidate most likely remains to be O.T. Fag, Fag Benelitz? Fag Benelitz Mason. Yo, I don't know how to pronounce dude's last name. You get what you get out of me. So mm. <laughs> it's little known about his character and you know, they may show a lot of times Marvel will do that. They'll make a dummy character so nobody can figure anything out. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is what he said during a live stream on his Instagram. He said, there's a whole conspiracy that I'm taskmaster. Now, this is what he said before going live with Brianna. Brisha, I mean, Brisha Webb, the homie. We all know Brisha. Brisha, right. the homie. So Brisha was like, you probably are knowing how Brisha said mm-hmm. <laughs> you, pro- <laughs> you probably are. So he responded with, you're trying to get it out as well? I thought we spoke about this. I thought we were going to keep some shit on the DL. Now, he could be just having fun and playing with everybody, knowing that it'll start up the rumor mill and start up everybody speculating, you know what I'm saying, like that. Or he could have just accidentally slipped that he is that character. Okay. And now he could be the new Mark Ruffalo and Tom Holland. Like, (laughs) those two can't keep any type of secret. Well, they can't tell them nothing. Yeah, I was like, all right, cool. But what do you think? Do you think he may be Taskmaster or do you think they got somebody else possibly being him? I thought it was going to be, um, okay, so that's the guy from Stranger Things, right? No, that's, uh, yeah, I, what the fuck is he from? Hold on, I don't see what he, I don't think he's from, I don't know if he's the one from Stranger Things. That's David Harbour that's from Stranger Things, the one that's playing the Red Guardian. Oh, I thought he was the one playing Taskmaster. Nah. I thought it was him. Nah, oh, the dude. I thought it was because I'm. I just go by faces, you know, that I recognize. Yeah, um, of course you do. Of course you do. Uh, he's not my type, but I just I like Stranger Things, so I'm like, oh, that's the guy from Stranger Things. You know how Hollywood will start pushing somebody, like all of a sudden you just see him everywhere, like Brisha, like all of a sudden so, he's everywhere. Yo, Brisha. Yo, just, have you not? Like these guys everywhere. Have you not noticed every time you look up somewhere, Brisha? I'm like, oh, Brisha girl, is in every work. movie now. So just, he's literally whenever they need a black person, it's Brisha now, which is somebody dope. Was, I mean, can't can't hate a hustle, but uh, he's from the Handmaid's Tale. Oh, okay, okay, okay. 
he okay. played he played Luke in The Handmaid's Tale, so that's him. But in, and didn't okay, wasn't it the other guy that was in the, the Spider Man when they hinted? Who? The guy that oh, what's his name? The guy that always plays bad. He always plays like every time you see his face, you're like, okay, he's gonna he's the killer. He's the guy. Which there's there's several motherfuckers. I know <laughs> that's like every white man to us right now, right? Um, uh, oh, <laughs> I know that was so unnecessary. Um, I was just gonna say so, Steve Harris. We're so all... scared of you guys. Okay. <laughs> oh, we're so terrified for our lives even through this conversation. Uh, um, Clancy Brown. Oh well, I don't think Clancy. Yeah, Clancy might not be in it. I haven't heard anything about him being a part of the movie, which would be dope. Every time. Face, though. He. I mean, he's a good. He's a good strong villainous <laughs> character actor. Like he is. He got villain face. No, no. Can you imagine just walking up on somebody like, hey, yo? You got villain face, dog. Like, damn. I think that's exactly what the casting. Uh, give me somebody. Give me a Clancy Brown type, but younger. I think that's exactly what they do. Yo, those be the most hilarious <laughs> things I've seen when I go on auditions. When somebody say, "Yeah, I want a Faison Love type, but smaller." Wow. I'm like, I'm like, yo. So why am I? No, let's not do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do this because I, I kind of know what this role is going to entail. Let's not do this. You know what I'm saying? I got a phase on love story. Anyway, go ahead. Shit, we can drop that bitch on here. You know, I don't care. All right. So if you want to <laughs> drop it, you can drop it. And... <laughs> I'll drop that yeah, story. No, no, one time he, he tried he tried to kiss me on the face and it was just like, you know, you realize you, you got real strength in your neck, ladies. Like you could just, you know, your neck was like, no, no, not gonna, not not gonna grab me no not gonna and uh yeah he uh yeah it was it was awkward it was real awkward and uh, his tongue touched my face i felt like sigourney weaver <laughs> and, and, oh. i was like i got i got <laughs> oh. yeah i had known him about 15 minutes it was real awkward Oh, 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 like, oh, 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 I thought you, I was hoping to God you to say 15 months at least. Oh, oh no, no, it still no, don't he, make it no yeah, better. No. I was just like, oh, God, no. Yeah, we were at the comedy store in the driveway and he was, he called himself trying to holler at me in some kind of way. He got to pulling on my, on my face and my neck he had to do all the work because I was just like, we not, we not going over there. <laughs> <laughs> Strong ass neck muscles like, eh? yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think, I think my, uh, my blowjob should be much better if because my neck is hella strong. Okay, I didn't need to say that. That was unnecessary. That yeah, was, cause, that cause, was unnecessary. Cause, Children are listening. Now my son can't watch. Okay. All right. yeah, it ain't no kids listening to this shit. If they do, parents got their kids listening to this shit. You are a terrible parent. I don't even Call let my ch- I don't even <laughs> let my child listen to me like <laughs> I got a 16 year old nigga. Don't you listen to this podcast? You better just like it and download it, then delete it. Like don't that- you listen? Download it for daddy, but don't listen. <laughs> don't listen. Daddy need the download number. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, let's go. That's all the Marvel news I got. And we got a lot of DC news. So because this it's is better. My, this is why this heifer's is here. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what year is it? Am I in my auntie's house? What just happened? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> what with, some pl- with some plastic on the furniture. I'm a heifer now. Okay. <laughs> I like the heifers making a comeback, though. <laughs> Oh heifer! Oh uh, heifer! <laughs> you know that's how it is. Bro. <laughs> oh heifer! It's always old and heifer. Right, like you can't, can't be a new heifer. No, like, no, it's not a young heifer. It's an old heifer. It's an old heifer. So ba- the Batman star Robert Pattinson says he refuses to exercise while quarantined. He I'll said, <laughs> he, he said, "quote If you're working out all the time, you're part of the problem." Yeah, I, I didn't. I, that could that was that was that was troubling for me. That, so, that, that was troubling. Let me for let me. me go to let me go to what he says. This is what he says. He said the, uh, that the trainer hired by Warner Brothers gave him a Bosu ball and a weight. He said he's just barely doing anything, especially compared to co-star Zoe Kravitz, who's been working out five days per week. He says, "Quote." I think if you're working out all the time, you're, you're part of the problem. You set a precedent. No one was doing this in the 70s, even James Dean. He wasn't exactly ripped. Uh, he said he was talking about his roles in Easter Eden and Rubber Without a Cause. Now, here's here's the um, issue I have. <laughs> there's a lot of issues with that statement. Uh, first of all, nigga, you are Batman. <laughs> he want to be Adam West Batman. <laughs> That's literally what you're trying to <laughs> He's like, bring back Adam West, bring back seventies dad body Batman. You can't, you can't bat two to your way through this movie, sir. Yeah. You can't, you, uh, listen, 
I know how a lot of people may have felt one way or the other about Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne, but Ben Affleck came on set the first day and rest motherfucker jacked before he yeah. had a, you know what I'm saying? Now, granted, they CGI'd the workout scene <laughs> when and later on when he was doing the training, finally get ready to fight Superman. But even Henry Cavill said when he first reported on set, Ben towered over him in mm. size and in stature. And so Ben put in the work for it. But you're so did Henry Cavill though because and if, Henry, if you, yeah if you watch the old British TV shows like if you watch when he was on you know in England he's, yeah he's a thin I mean he's he's he's, he's a, a slim thin guy. Yeah, wait he's, he's a, a thin guy. no you said he's a thin it's a thin. Like a th- he's a thinner he's a thinner sure. guy oh okay. and then even in um even in uh what was that that horrible movie Man from Uncle you could see you know when he wasn't as dedicated he's a slimmer guy he definitely has to build he definitely had to work to put that muscle on him. Yeah, I, don't I think agree. that's his natural default. You know, some people are kind of naturally muscular and they build. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think he's naturally muscular. I think he's naturally thin, and he had to build all that. So but, Rob Pattinson's statement is very disappointing. Um, I feel like he's going to lean heavily on the suit, which oh. is going to give you that Shazam look, which we didn't really like. Okay, let me talk about. Let me. I, I'm glad you brought that up because I'm going to bring up two things. First, Robert Pattinson saying he don't want to work out. Look, Kumail Nagiani became a sex symbol. For the Eternals. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like, the same amount of money that Disney put into him, Warner Brothers is putting into Pattinson. So what right. are you talking about? Stop saying you're part of the problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. We know we're not going to get the exact what looks like the pages of a comic book when it comes to these superheroes. But you want to have the people you've cast in these roles to look larger than life, especially when the camera adds weight to you. So you want them to have this muscular physique. So when they're in front of the camera, you're like, God damn. Then when I it want, comes, I want to believe he can beat everybody's ass. I want to believe that. Now, when it comes to Zachary Levi, uh, first of all, when I saw the suit, I was like, "Yo, why is there space?" Like, <laughs> like I mean, I understood. Is... It looked better as they as he got more. Um, it looked better once he was doing the action scenes, the fighting scenes. I think they were able to. Yeah, they were able to. CGI. Yeah, but the initial when he first turned into Shazam for the first time, it did. It looked weird. It looked really weird. Because Shazam is supposed to be bigger than everybody else, and I and, get it. It was it's impossible <laughs> for a human to look like Shazam, but no, yeah. it's not. It's not. No, it's not. Well, it would it's have just to be a wrestler. They would have had to. They would have had to get the Rock. It would have had to, to well, be something else. And he's Black Adam. But the thing yeah. is, no. The thing is. You could do it, but I don't think you could do it without unless you have all of the steroids. Yeah, and when I yeah, say you, you, all, you, would, you need like an eighties uh, Hulk Hogan. Type yeah, of body. Like you, you need, need an 80s Lucifer really, Rigno body. Yeah, yeah, you need somebody really, really bigger and chiseled still with the small waist because Shazam was big in the top, but he still had the little comic book waist. Yes, he you did. Know, and usually when men are that big at the top, their their midsections are are they got the worst growing. legs in the row in the world. Yeah. They got the worst so legs in the, the world. Um, yeah, it's the it, it was it was it was hard for them, but I mean I think it came together by the end of the movie. You know I was okay with it, but. In the that very first shot, I was like, yeah, because we it was we went from literally zero to you know to that. But but yeah, I will I say I love what I love what he like did. That. I love I actually ended up loving Shazam because I was surprised the way Zachary Levi pulled off the role. Yeah, but the, uh, the only oh, he issue was great. he was out, yeah, he was the out, he only was issue I have is Billy Batson is supposed to be a kid and Shazam is a grown up kid, but little Billy Batson played by Asher Angel was more mature as a kid than he was as Shazam. You know what I'm saying? It was it was like the two actors weren't watching each other perform. Well, so they could I, be think, the I think the issue with that is that, um, again, this goes to whenever you adapt DC. DC has such dark storylines. When you read it or when you, if you ever watch the animation where uh, Superman versus Shazam, the animation, and you see Clark is interviewing uh, Billy Batson, and he's kind of, it's kind of, he's got, he's a sad kid. Yeah, he's a sad kid, and it's kind of hard for him to be as playful with the life he had when you're like he's running away. His his mom was trash. His mom was terrible. It wasn't like she got sick and couldn't take care of him. This bitch was like, bye. I don't want you. Don't come back here. I'm about to lay up with this dude in this crib. I mean, she was terrible. That was it. it would have been difficult for him to be as playful. Um, as as he as yeah. he would have had to be, and I think part of it too was the age difference. Billy Batson was supposed to be about ten years old. He wasn't supposed to be in high school. Yeah, you know, so. I, but also my issue became 
the thing is of Shazam, he's the he's the adult embodiment of an uh, he's the adult embodiment of what Billy Batson would be. So the yeah. question becomes like in the stories we've never seen it. What happens when Billy becomes an actual adult? What does he transform to, or does he abil- give up the abilities? He's like Spider Man. You never really see them grow up. Oh, yeah, I guess so. But back to Robert Pattinson. Hey, bro, like if somebody t- send this to you, there's a clip to listen to. Hey, fam, you need to go ahead and do this work, bro. bro please, Robert. Please. Like I've been one of those people who have been. Nobody wants to see scrawny Batman. No, and I've been trying to, <laughs> and I've been trying to give him the benefit of the doubt when everybody was like, "Oh man, the dude from Twilight, we're gonna have the Batman that sparkles." I was like, "No, he's got other bodies of work that shows he can do this." And then knowing what we've seen in Batman and what we've seen from Matt Reeves, it's like, okay, we know we should get a good look and a good feel for this movie. Then he was talking about some. It's gonna be a sanitized bad and blah blah blah. Like, hey man, at this point, just stop fucking talking. Please. What is a sanitized bat? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That it, sounds crazy. I mean, like, Christian Bale is a it, he bodied up a little bit for Batman, but he still he still kind he still stayed kind of slim. But he at least he again he at least looked like he could fight. Mm-hmm. I just need Rob. I need you to get to where you look like you could beat somebody up. Like that's what we need you. We do not need Adam West. We don't need ba- we don't need Batman with a gut. We, <laughs> Adam West body was the worst out of all the <laughs> like I when I saw and, Adam uh, West I mean granted we understand this was our first foray into like live action superheroes but you looked at Batman you was like whose ass does he whoop for real but like, when you were a kid like when I watched Batman it was when when that would come on in the morning we were getting ready for school yeah you know, in the 80s it was good enough but then it was like once we saw once we got it's like once you get exposed to a better batman he was like oh i respect what you did uh, however like, oh, we ain't never trying to see that shit again with your purple with your purple cape we ain't never trying to see that again <laughs> So let's go to the next story. So this was some news I got today and I was beyond fucking excited. Doom Patrol season 2 has a release date of June 25th of this year. Oh. Now, now on top of that it will be shown simultaneously on both HBO Max and the DC Universe, which okay. is also kind of weird. Because remember when they said Doom Patrol originally season two was going to be straight on HBO Max, and everybody was like, well, what the fuck? This was an original DC Universe. And yeah. people also thought that DC Universe would become absorbed in the HBO Max because why? That would only hmm, make sense. And so that doesn't happen. But now to hear it's going on both, it's kind of weird, but it's similar to the same thing with Star Girl. How Star Girl will her episode will deb- debut on the DC Universe, then the next day it's on the CW app. Mm-hmm. So it's like, all right, I guess, but nonetheless, They're just I- trying to expand their reach. No, I get it. I, I definitely agree with that. But I- I'm here for do. Look, anything with Doom Patrol, I'm here for. Like Doom Patrol can do no wrong to me. After they I mean, had, I think I think, uh, I think Brendan Fraser definitely made a comeback with it. For sure. Oh, he absolutely yeah. as he made a comeback because of course we saw him fucking the babysitter in the first five minutes of the <laughs> first episode. Uh him Diane Guerrero deserves all the respect and props in the world. I understand she was in Orange is the New Black, but people weren't paying attention to her like that. Yeah, that's right. They I'm should pay attention to her way more. And then on top of that, you had an episode where one dude made an entire neighborhood come. He made a <laughs> he made a sentient street have an orgasm. Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Flex Mentalo made Daddy the Street bus. Like that's hilarious. <laughs> did, you, did you see that? You saw the episode, right? Yeah, yeah. I watched the whole season. Yeah, with Flex <laughs> made everybody come simultaneously. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it was a great series. It was. And it to was. see it's got season two coming. I mean, I'm more than excited. I'm, I'm happy that people will be able to see it on two different platforms. Granted, you now have to get one or the other. Either way it goes. But I'm I'm excited for it. So I want your thoughts on it. Um, I actually like the DC app. Um, I have it, and it's one of the apps I actually pay for. Um, because I'm good for bootlegging, just so you know. Uh, but this I actually we pay for. <laughs> um, I like it because of the vintage shows it gives you access to. Yeah. So it was um, you know, obviously the new stuff is is cute too, but. I like it for the old stuff. I love uh, the Harley Quinn cartoon. It's amazing. So well written. And we're in season two now, I guess. And um, I like it. So HBO Max, if you get HBO, um, because everybody's getting away from cable. So they're trying to, you know, they're trying to do what everybody else is doing and just create the, the, the app. 
and everything if you want it, but I don't really care about it, everything else on the app. So DC works for me, for me to watch what I want to watch. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to keep my subscriptions down. D- DCU, I mean, DC, yeah, the DCU app is $7. The HBO Go Max app is going to be 12 or something. So it's like, it's cheaper. I don't know. I just like it better. But I understand what they're doing to me. That's It's like the equivalent of back in the day when a show would come on. And then the new episodes would be like on ABC, but then reruns and syndication would be on uh, your local channels or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's like the same thing. It's like, okay, so you can watch it on this or you can watch it over here a day or so later. If you're willing to wait, it's just like Hulu does the same. If you're willing to wait, that's cool. Like, yeah. give, give people many ways to watch your show. Don't limit them for money because the money will come. You know, the, the world is changing. We're all give, giving up cable slowly. Stop trying to control it. Oh, you can only like, like watch it here. Bitch, let us watch this damn show, however you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And stop trying to control how we watch it. Do you want us to fuck with this shit or not? You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, how many people have fallen in love with a show on syndication and didn't even, like like Big Bang Theory? People didn't even know Big Bang Theory was still making new episodes. Uh-huh. They, they watched it in syndication and then was like, oh, is the show still on? Now let's turn to CBS and watch it. You know, just let people, let people be entertained the way they want to. Put your ads in there. You gonna get your money? You gonna get your money? Like you yeah. Get your money. You know, I just, I, I, I think that for me, first of all, let me say this: Harley Quinn season two is fucking phenomenal. Uh, this upcoming episode, if you wait till you see it, so y'all will hear this on Thursday. I've already seen it, and Winston Marshall and I have already done the review on it. Yo, that's all I can say is, <laughs> yo. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I, I think y'all need to understand when a black person come to you and just be like, yo, that's some yeah, real yeah, shit right there. Try not to say the other word, right? <laughs> yeah, because yo. So that's <laughs> that's what's up. Also, we're going to, let me, since I got it here now, next Tuesday on Blurds in the Hood, uh, Winston Marshall and I will have an interview with the show, one of the showrunners of Harley Quinn. We'll be interviewing Justin Halpern. So stay tuned for that. And as always, the reviews. Oh, drop that's over so time. great. So what happened was they saw our review we did for episode five of this season, all the showrunners and even some of the, the writers. And so they came across it and tweeted us how they had it had mm-hmm. them crying, laughing and they loved it. And so they went back and watched all the other reviews. Oh, and so it's it's so dope. So like we're trying to pitch for a, a cameo spot in next uh, season. <laughs> like we want to be the, we want to be the Not two up. Right? We want to be the two other dudes on the couch talking about the two lame dudes that they had on the episode before. <laughs> we want to be them two other dudes, right. black dudes. Like, you see the old clown ass dudes, old puss ass. Muscle. Like, right. we, just, we just want to be that. But, any, <laughs> but nonetheless, I do agree. DC Universe is a great thing to have. And yeah, people are cutting the cord a lot. And speaking of DC Universe, takes me into my next story Swamp Thing has been revived. Hey, heard. Yeah. By the CW. Now, this is weird. Okay, so for those who don't faith, know, people, we just had to have faith. The show was good. They can't. Well, they canceled it prematurely. Well, they canceled here's, it so, halfway through the first episode. So, so <laughs> let me. <laughs> so, like, what's damn? This seems like the absolute truth. So, let me break this down to everybody who don't know what happened. So, Swamp Thing, because it was filming in New Orleans, and something happened with them not getting the tax breaks they were requiring, they were ended up going extremely over budget, and Warner Brothers was like, "Shut all this shit down," and so oh. it, it got cut off. In the middle of the season, now the CW has picked has picked it up in a sense, meaning they will air the first season. But as of right now, there has been no talk of a season two or continuing those episodes after, because there was still episodes that were supposed to happen, but we didn't get them because they shut down production. I'll tell okay. you this: I, I need. I, to, I don't think they're gonna go through all that just to not. I need Florani Man. I I need. Episodes. It's only what? I'm sorry. It's only 10 episodes, so. I don't think, no, I think that episode, the last episode we were left with, with uh, where you had Jason turning into Floronic Man at the end, mm-hmm. I think that was, I don't think that was a, a, that wasn't an actual season finale. They just had to make it look as such. You know, with you talk, they had to make it look like a season finale. That was an episode going into the, fight, going further, because the fights were going to be him versus Floronic Man towards the end. Like, that wasn't the end of the season. I think they had, like, three or four more episodes set. I'm not sure. I don't know if they were actually doing just 10 like they did with, because I don't even think they did 10 episodes of uh, Swamp Thing, to be quite honest. 
I really? thought it was I thought it was ten because Let I was me... watching it on the uh, yeah it's ten episodes. It's, it's ten. 10? Episodes. Yeah, it was just like uh it was just like the Titans and uh Doom Patrol. They had ten. They start they were like in blocks of ten. Yeah, that's how, but... they, that's how they all started, and then they stopped Swamp Thing before, so they gave us ten episodes. Hmm. Yeah, I thought so it, I just thought it was more in production that we that didn't get cut, but that seems like a big investment to just be out of content ten weeks later. I mean, and that's the thing. Like they were supposed to have this whole thing set up where it was like, let me see, because I know we did the reviews on them real quick. You might be right. Yeah, it was ten episodes. Yeah, you're right. Damn, I thought it was less. I I, I didn't want to question you, but I swear I thought it was less. It felt like that's because of the way the show felt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the way it the was show a quick watch. It moved it was, really fast. Once it moved real it. fast, yeah. so it didn't feel like ten episodes. Damn, you know, I, it actually was a very good uh a very good show. Uh, I like I like what DC did with the uh, kind of okay. off brand here. It was a good show. It was a good show. Okay. First I mean, of all, was, I mean it's interesting the swamp thing can be. Yeah, you know, this is not these are not Trinity no. characters. These no. are these no. are DC dark characters. I'm past I'm past the whole fact of the Trinity. I'm past that. That's why I love when you do other characters. I, I respect that even more. I love it when you go outside of the Trinity. I trust me, I love it to the max. The fact is that show was not about Swamp Thing. It was about Abby Arcane. Well, it was building to it. It was getting there. Because, I mean, Swamp Thing, it, you know, it's only so much you can do. He lives in the earth. You know <laughs> it's not like, You know what I'm saying? It's not like he down there chilling. It's not like he down there cracking jokes. And shit. He only come up when he necessary or when he needs to. So you have to have the other characters have to really drive the plot. But I feel like they were. I feel like they were doing just like what they were doing with the Titans. They were getting us there. I mean, season one, the Titans was hella slow. Oh, oh, it absolutely you know was. I mean? But <laughs> it, was, it, it, it was worth it by the end of season three. You know, so it was like okay. I, you mean I season two? Got, I mean, yeah, we, one, yeah, season two. That was. Because I was like, yeah, when yeah. you said that, let me tell you something. You just fucked my whole head up. I was like, yo, did I miss a whole season? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm I, yeah too. Yeah, so it was like it was. You know, I feel like it's a slow burn. But yeah. I think that, and I definitely think they're all going to come together the, the way Greg Berlanti did, did with his universe. So it's like, we just got to give them a minute, especially since you see the new animations are kind of embracing the show, the TV show characters well, in a way here, that they weren't doing before either. Well, I think, because we can get into this one real quick. The fact that Warner Brothers has three separate units for all of these. There is a film unit, there's a mm -hmm. TV unit, and there's an animation unit. And the only thing that that's consistent across all of them pretty much because I don't even know if it comes into yeah well it probably hasn't come to the f the film unit yet is Matt Ryan is John Constantine yeah that's the consistent and because like right now I understand what Keanu Reeves did in the movie and that was before we really knew who the character was but damn it nobody is Constantine for me anymore but Matt Ryan yeah I think that uh Keanu's uh Constantine was kind of trash but that was because they didn't really lay the foundation properly like you said we didn't really understand it's the thing about the comic book movies is that you have to understand where the person is in the universe, where they, how they relate to everyone that you know yeah. in order to kind of embrace them. And so when you just drop these standalone, you know, films, it's like, well, who, oh, you know, a lot of people didn't even know Constantine was a comic book. You know what I mean? So it's like, they just thought it was a, a movie about a guy that had, a, you know, <laughs> had sold his soul, you know, that could talk to the, the yeah. or whatever. So it's like, it, they, you don't even realize, oh no, this is DC. This is like, he lives in the same universe as Batman. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. See, now it makes a little more sense. Like the, you know, when you talk about the, you know, the superhero world where you either have the metas or you have the mutants or where, where magical things can happen and where things, mm -hmm. you know, it's not the world we live in. Versus it being a horror film, which is to me how they kind of positioned it a little bit when it came out. And um, I don't know. I just like Spawn, you know, you got to kind of know where people are in the in the drop, drop, drop them into the universe they belong into properly. Right. So that we can have our mind where we need our mind to be as we watch this story. So to me, they didn't do that. But that was also before who knew comic books were going to, you know, movies were going to do what they do, what they do now. Well, I time. think I don't. I mean, with Constantine. So let me look at Constantine's release date because I don't think that argument would stand out because I think movies that already started superhero movies 
had started to do those. So Constantine came out 2005. By then, we had already gotten X-Men. We had already gotten Spider-Man. We were getting comic book movies that were doing numbers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you were also getting mainstream characters that everybody knew. My mother knows okay. Spider-Man. Okay, that's you fair. You know, when you start talking about Constantine, he's like, again, he's a DC dark character. He's, he's like the B-side. If you don't know the universe, you have no idea who he is. If you're not really about this life. So again, are we making movies for comic book people? I don't think so, guys. I don't think they make these movies for us because we already love them. They don't have to make movies for us. They're making movies for my mom who went to go see Black Panther. You know, it was, yeah. I went to go see the Black Panther. Yeah, you know that makes sense. Like? So these were the comic book movies. These were the comic book movies that we got in 2005. I just wanted to pull it up so I had it. Elektra, and they only did that because of the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck right. and Jennifer Garner. Fantastic Four, the first one. So that's not bad. That's Wait, that's got... the one with Michael Chiklis? Yes. Oh, okay. God, that yeah. was awful. We're not okay. talking. Not... No. <laughs> oh, and fan and fan four stick was better? Fuck out of here. I know they uh... all were bad. The Fantastic Four was this. Just... Remember that Silver Surfer movie? God, oh. what were they thinking? <laughs> let's, not, let's not go back into that. Look, I ain't going to lie to you. I was like, if it ain't Ben Diesel as a Silver Surfer, I don't want it. Like, I was mm. adamant on that. But now I got him as a top a, a little body to a whatever. Um, a silver Surfer, I see him as a kind of like a, a, a slim, like again, kind of a gaunt dude. Because I don't really see him as having a, a strong muscle. To, like, oh, like first of all, you know, no, 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 no. Before we ain't going no further. Little, so we address little, little this bicep, shit. Little biceps, was, little biceps. Look, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your mad tight word of the day is gaunt. Okay, like ain't gaunt. <laughs> ain't <a little> gaunt. <laughs> Diesel kind of body. Okay, yeah, I feel you though. Um, you know, he wanted to play the tree. He wanted he to challenge himself as an actor. Ah, uh, okay. And he came into the <laughs> and he came into the recording studio the first day on stilts. But that is a whole other fucking story for you all. Uh, this nigga walked in in stilts. Where do you specifically walk in? Like, hey, I got a big role for a movie. I'm gonna need some stilts. What are you doing? I'm playing a tree. Excuse me, sir. I yeah, need to I'm, be the tree. That's I need to be the here. tree. <laughs> He's like, this is the Stravinsky method. Uh <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm channeling my tree, sir. Are you are you gonna actually be a tree? No, I'm just voicing it. Okay, cool. But yeah, we got so that year too. We got Constantine, Batman Begins, Sin City, uh, The Crow, Wicked Prayer, which no one cared about, V for Vendetta, and History of Violence. We also got Sky High and Man Thing. Okay, so History of Violence, again, nobody knew that was from the D.C. World. Yeah, nobody knew that. Um, but it, the way it was presented, he didn't have any powers. That's the that's the whole thing. He didn't have any powers. He was just a guy. That was a graphic novel. That really wasn't a comic book. You know what I mean? So it was just a story about a regular man. Oh, when you, man Whenever thing. you bring in the supernatural or powers or anything like that, you have to kind of drop it properly. Sky High, you know, nobody, Sky High was standalone. It wasn't really connected. It was a Disney thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Man Thing is basically Marvel's Electric version. Electra was terrible, you know. Oh, I didn't even want to discuss that. We all, that is a given consensus. But that was that. when Jennifer Garner was hot off her alias when she was just, you know, the, the yeah. limber chick that could do flips and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, let's get, and she was fucking Ben Affleck at the time. I was like, oh, let's get her, him and her, you know, to recreate. <laughs> But I mean, that was a terrible daredevil and a terrible lecture. So. Hey, never we can never forget that playground fight scene with mm. him with the worst red hair ever. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was just oh, oh God, that fucking... was that was Green Lantern, uh, <laughs> Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern bad. And you know, there are some people who try to still defend that fucking movie. I don't understand why Ryan Reynolds is not even defending that movie. So why are you like? Yeah, <laughs> anybody... no, it was it was no, it was poorly. You know what they did wrong with that was they just leaned too heavily on the comedy for that one. They should have that one should have been a little more. <sighs> well, well, they lean too heavy on the scene. Look, I understand what his powers are, being his powers are will. And yeah. I understand when it comes to the suit, but you could have done something that was some level of practicality or a better CGI than what they kept doing. Cause... Yeah, they wasn't. The world wasn't ready for uh for the lantern just yet. <laughs> the world wasn't ready. All right. I hope so let's get right the next time. Uh well we'll find out when it comes to the HBO Max series that they are doing. So is Jeff it gonna John... be um so it's not gonna be this year, gonna... so it's not gonna be um uh you know Detroit. Um John John Diggle. Stewart. It's not gonna be Diggle. Oh, it's not gonna so <laughs> um all right, he's from so, Detroit, that's why I said I know. Detroit. So let me let me I figure out how, his name. Let me figure out how I'm gonna say this without throwing anything out there. All right, so Everybody knows what they saw at the end of Crisis. 
And at the last episode, matter of fact, the last episode of Arrow, shall I say, everyone knows what we saw with the Green Ring. We all know what we wanted it to be. There also is a, like I said, there's a Green Lantern series that is hitting mm-hmm. HBO Max, and there's still going to be a Green Lantern Corps movie in development. Mm-hmm. As far as what David Ramsey, who played John David, that's his doing, name. I was gonna say Randolph, <laughs> but I knew that was wrong. <laughs> just hate Fox Hills all the time. Anyway, <laughs> so so as far as what he's doing is what they're doing with that. As far as what DC and Berlanti Productions are doing with that, it's a um. How do I want to say this without saying anything important? It's a wait and see. Oh, okay. It's okay. a, that's all. That's all I can say because I, I can't. Just wish they would do better with the connectivity on the D- DC end. Well, that's well as far that's as part what, of the wow factor. We like it's part of what people like. We you like talking about movies and TV? People. Yeah, I wish I, I want them to start doing better, a better job of connecting. I mean, they did that's... it with Crisis. Don't get me wrong; they did a great job bringing everybody together for Crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like them to continue that. I get well, if they don't want to do that after the movies, that's fine. But well, at least that's on the TV. That's level, a Warner Brothers. That's a Warner Brothers issue. That's really not honestly. People keep thinking it's DC TV. And whatnot. That's that's Warner Brothers, the parent level. That's them. well. I mean, whatever whatever they're deciding, I need them to. I would like to see some consistency. Like the like we love the Nightwing. If we're gonna have more Dick Grayson stories, use the same guy. Like let's just stick with him. We don't want to meet keep meeting four and five and six flashes. Okay. Look, like I don't need to keep seeing flash. Batman's. I don't need to keep seeing Batman's parents get killed. I just I'm gonna be real. Oh, they already said they brought. Well, that, that's such a. I mean, did you even see how they worked it into the to the last movie? It's like they just. That's just such a part of of Bruce's identity. Um, that's just such a part. I I, get, I, I as a writer, I understand why they do that. <laughs> um, but as but as a viewer, it's like okay, we know. Like we we know we we know how Bruce Wayne got here. But, but yeah, it's, such a, you, it's such a core part of who he is. If you take that away from him, he, he really has no reason to be well, that. Well, here's so. the thing. I think we go, and it's this will go into this. I think we go the Spider-Man homecoming route, which yeah. means we acknowledge they dead. We don't need to see them die. Yeah, and, but Thomas Wayne is a major character in, in the universe in no, a no, way I, that, I get that, uh, you know, but, that Uncle Ben is not. Cause, I mean, but Flash you, only, Wayne. you only did the murder to set up the word Martha later to make them. Okay, you're friends. going back to BVS. I'm talking about the one. I'm talking about the one you just watched last week. The cartoon. Oh, oh, we'll, we'll talk about. We can talk about that in a minute. Uh, but nonetheless, let's it's go like, to this. It's, next. Like, it's like a Superman has to have a Lois. Yeah, speaking of his, you know, whatever. And speaking of Superman and Lois, speaking of Superman and Lois, the upcoming CW show is stacking their roster. So, uh, Indy Navarrete has been added as a series regular opposite Eric Valdez and Emmanuel Chiriki. She's going to play Sarah Cushing. Okay, Okay. now, the for those who don't know what Superman and Lois is about, it's going to revolve around the world's most famous superhero and comic book most famous journalist. Now, they're going to deal with all the stress and pressures and complexity that come with being working parents of twin boys. Now... So this is we, like Lois and Clark after they had babies? Well, they're adding, because what they're doing with this one, yes and no, because what they're doing is they're using the effects of crisis. Because remember, he only had Jonathan at first. Jonathan okay. was only a child, but now because of crisis and the world's combining and everything... He has two he, kids. He has two kids now. Okay. And so they also have added Vampire Diaries alum Wole Parks as The Stranger. To the series, so you know, Superman's a popular character no matter what. So you're always going to get. I mean, him. Lois and Clark was an amazing show, and it was so well liked because it focused more on their romance and yes, his it personal did. side than it did his superhero side. So that might work. I mean, it might work. Hey, Ron right. has a pretty good track record, so I'm, I'm always going to give him a chance. All right, now here's something that I want to hear your opinion on, and okay. I'm waiting, and I'm waiting to hear the fans' opinions on because a lot of people have had a a, a per an opinion and a perspective of this one way or another, but here's something that has been officially released and from trusted sources. All right. Mm -hmm. Amber Heard has not been fired from the sequel to Aquaman, despite all of the rumors and quote unquote reports you've heard. She still has her job because everyone keeps saying, well, the whole incident with her and Johnny Depp, which yes, she was whooping his ass. We know this. I'm confused on that story. We can we're not hearing consistent stories about their personal 
domestic I, squabble. I personally believe they was whooping each other's asses. I That's think what. they was fighting. Yeah, I think they I was think fighting. They was, they was squared up with each other. You know what I'm saying? But she has not been fired. People can be like, oh, they fired her. And just like they said, they fired Ezra Miller. Neither one have been fired. Ezra Miller is not going anywhere because, of course, that's the reason they had the cameo in Crisis. You are not. I understand things happen, but that situation was not enough because it looked more playful than anything else. And playing mm-hmm. with the woman, that's not getting removed. Amber Heard, you you've invested too much into her. Who did they say they were going to replace her with? Uh, I don't know. Nobody has said there was a replacement. People have made their own uh, their own suggestions of who she should be replaced with, but I've never heard anything about her being directly replaced. Everybody was like, yeah, she's fired. She's fired. See, she's going to be gone. I'm like, no, she still has a job. So, and there are going to be people who are going to say, well, I'm not going to go see Aquaman 2 if she's still a part of it. And of course, that's your choice, but I'm letting you know something. Yes, and you take- are. Okay. A, you go, A, you gonna go see it, and also take this how you want to. Some people, again, I told y'all earlier, some people might get their little feelings hurt. Warner Brothers doesn't give a fuck if one or two of you, or even a hundred of you, do not go see this movie. You want to know why? Numbers. Yeah, it's gonna do numbers. numbers. And again, people got to remember these blockbuster movies are not made for the United States. Yeah. They are made for overseas distribution because where they're much the, more liberal about stuff like that. And that's where the money comes in. Yeah, they're much, you know, in Europe, you know, domestic violence and stuff, the definitions are much more broad. Yes, so they they're, are. They're, they're a little more passionate and, and emotional people. You know, in France, your husband slap you, they're going to be like, it's because he loves you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, if he did not slap you, he would not love you. That's, that's just, he's passionate. You know what I mean? So. I don't. Yeah, I agree with you. Also, what people have to remember is that these kind of movies, whenever they're family friendly, they know, you know, they're going to make so much money because a family of five walked in that bitch. You know what I mean? So it's like Mm -hmm. if you if you don't go. okay, but, you know, seven family of fives when instead of you, that's thirty five versus your one. So it's you know, it's like Chris Brown. Y'all boycott him and he get richer. So like okay, Man. Who, who's really boycotting? Who's really boycotting? That's what I I tell everybody. These social media, I tell people all the time, and people don't believe me. Social media boycotts mean nothing. Yeah, they mean nothing. They are literally you just typing words because you're angry. I think they slow money down. I think they I think they initially slow money, but then eventually people are like, okay, well, okay, well, I want to go. So they're the people right after a week is done. Yeah. After a week, the anger is gone. So let's talk about this. That's all the normal news I have. And normally, okay, I already... I just, let me just let me just take one one quick second just to insert because uh, I was a married woman to anybody who might be listening and feeling some kind of way about what we said. This is the thing you got to understand about marriage. Um, married people scrap. Okay, I know nobody wants to say it, but it's mm-hmm. like it's not really the biggest deal in the world. On there, I think as a woman, you know the difference between when you're getting and when you're in a situation that's that's problematic versus when. We both got bad tempers and I might throw a plate or he might snatch me up. Um, and I might, you know, this might come back and buy me an ass one day when I'm trying to sit on Oprah's couch. Did I say this? But I'm sorry. I I, I just know. I don't, I, I think married, marriage is as close as two people that are not blood related can be. And they're going to get on each other's nerves in a different kind of way. And, uh, you know, if, y'all, if we hitting each other, that's not domestic violence, y'all. It's, it's toxic. Don't get me wrong. But it's not it's not abuse. Nobody's being abused. Everybody's everybody's, you know, everybody's froggy as they say you know what I mean so um I really think we just need to stay out their business and I hope that they get away from each other and find people that won't that won't bring that out in them um hey, yeah so moving on yeah. hey I want to say I agree with you as someone who's been previously married as well you know it happens sometimes you know like I'm telling you something I know like <laughs> I'm tell you, let me tell you something too as a married couple and I know people are gonna be like yo that's toxic after that fight you have some of the best sex you ever had. All right, that's definitely toxic, <laughs> yeah, but but not unrealistic. That's what but, I'm saying. It's yeah, not you know, unrealistic. Yeah. It's not unrealistic. But we just, it's we don't we just we're, we're paying more attention to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp because of who they are in the in the public great, eye. Uh, I thought she was great in the role, and I hope that uh, I, I hope we can forgive her um, for what goes on. That should that should stay personal. That was between them. That's what I, I I definitely agree with that. Like, yo, what they did in their life is I understand. Like I said, they're in the public eye, but at the same time, how they handle their relationship is on them. Granted, we'll be privy to it, but it is what yeah. it is. So, all right. So that was all the news I got. I got to go to some of my questions 
and calls I got because I got a bunch. I got both this week. I got calls and questions. So the calls came from the Mad Titan Podcast hotline, which you can get your calls into 818-276-6947, 818-276-6947. You can go ahead and get your calls. If you don't want to hear your own voice and you don't like your voice and you don't like how it sounds, you can email me at madtitanpodcast at gmail.com, madtitanpodcast at gmail.com. So I'm going to go to my first caller right now. Hey, Jay, this is your boy Kevin from Louisiana. I was just calling the ass, man, with everything going on with the new Batman movie, do you think now is the time that they should bring out um, one of my favorite supervillains of all time, Mr. Freeze? And um, do you think that they can get somebody like a Brian Cranston or somebody to play that role? Because I want to see somebody that can bring the real depth of the character out. Um, the sadness of him, the anger, all those things, man. Keep it up, dog. It's one of your main blurs on the dirty south side. So appreciate you, man. Keep it up. And we're going to support you, my brother. Love you, man. All right. Thank you, Kevin, from your call all the way from Louisiana, man. I appreciate you always calling in. So you wanted to ask, with everything going on with the new Batman movie, do you think it's time that they should now bring out one of your personal favorite supervillains of all time, Mr. Freeze? And do you think they can get somebody like Brian Cranston to play that role? Because you want to see the depth he can bring out with the character and the sadness and the anger and all of those. Man, that's a good-ass question. I'm going to leave that to you first, Heather. Brian Cranston would be a great freeze but again i didn't realize freeze was that old but then again i guess he could be because you know brian cranston's face is not enduring well um <laughs> it, i mean it's, i mean if you go back to malcolm in the middle like he's aged a thousand years since he got famous this business is hard on the face yes it um, is I, I do I, as an actor i do think he would be uh he will bring it. He would definitely. I've never. He doesn't disappoint. You know. So as an actor, I, I do believe he would bring it. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing a free. I mean, Schwarzenegger was such a terrible freeze. Oh my God! Um, He's the the most brutal Mister Freeze I've ever seen. And Alfred Molina was one of the best in Harley Quinn the animated series. I'm just gonna say. Yeah, that. he was. <laughs> he was. Alfred, Mo, but Alfred Molina also he rarely disappoints. Yeah, that's very um, true. He was. Uh, he was. He was a good Doc Ock, except for I just didn't like seeing his stomach. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, I hate his stomach. Um, I would, yeah, I think that would be. I think I can. I can't think of anybody off the top of my head that I. Because you, you need somebody. You know who might also be good is um, what's the guy from Tinker Taylor? The other guy, the guy that played. Because you need you need a you need a stalwart actor. Mm-hmm. You, you need a really you need somebody with some chops because, like you said, Freeze is a very uh, complicated character. Yes, I'm gonna tell you his name. I think he played. He played in. Uh, he played uh, Gordon in uh, the Batman Begins in the Christian Bale Batman. Oh, Gary Oldman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's another. He he would be good too. He would be good too. But I I definitely can see what the why Brian Cranston would be. Okay, in, so in the conversation. So I here's just, I just, my because you need somebody that can do the the complicated layers. Oh, absolutely. So here's mine, and it just just hear me out with this, okay? To make sure I got the actual. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. Okay, that was too much. I did too much moving. Okay, let's go back. Uh, here we go. So my first choice, my first choice, as always, for people who just know me, I don't know why, I just want to see him in a superhero role so bad, John Hamm. I am diehard about John Hamm being in a superhero role. I think he can deliver as Mr. Freeze. Now, if you cannot get him, my second choice is Anson Mount. If you don't remember who that is, for those who remember that god awful Inhuman series, he played Black <laughs> Bolt. He played Black Bolt. I know so, him from something else, but yeah, okay, I know who you're talking about. What else did you know him from? He was in this one Lifetime movie <laughs> where, where his wife was uh, his wife killed him for no reason at all because she wanted his money. And I always remember him from uh, the two Mrs. Kissels with him and um, John Stamos. But yeah, no, I do remember him from Black Bolt as well. <laughs> but I, I just like him. I like I like he's got good face. You're picking handsome people though, honey, and, and Freeze doesn't really have a face that you see, so you don't well, want to waste does... you don't want to waste John Ham's face if it's under a glass the whole time. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, but you're not yeah, gonna what? give but you're not gonna get nobody as ass ugly because you're like, yo, we're gonna put this motherfucker in the glass. You're not gonna do that though. Yeah, but you can't waste that they're 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 handsome, handsome. Like they're pretty. You can't waste pretty. Brian Cranston's not pretty. He got, you know, he got character <laughs> face. He got strong character face. 
John Hamm would be great in in somebody's universe because again, he's a great actor. Uh, I like I actually like the the Inhumans thing. I just you know they didn't know what to do with you it. Did? Oh Lord Jesus! All right, so we gonna... it wasn't bad for ABC at eight o'clock on a Friday when motherfuckers is outside <laughs> like this is a summer. I ain't gotta stay in for this shit. All right, was... thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin, for your call. Thank right. you, Nolans. Here go uh, my, my, on tea. Here go my next uh, <laughs> que- here's my question from the uh, emails. Shouts out to Fantastic three one four. Oh, Fred Castillo, you one of the members of the Supervillain Squad. I appreciate you. His subject is who is better prepared. This is what he says. Hey, Mister J, it's been a trying week in this pandemic. Ain't nothing to play with. But I do have a question that you could probably help answer for me. Should the pandemic prove to be the monster that I think is going to be and carry on for many more months, which studio, <clears throat> excuse me, Marvel or DC, has the better chance of coming out this with the least damage to the product? I know Marvel Studios is trying to keep timelines intact, but could these delays cause them to go the digital route to avoid a bottleneck with their own property? DC, on the other hand, doesn't appear to be lining up their movies as aggressively, so this could give them an advantage as to how flexible they can be with release dates of their own properties. Thanks for reading my email, and I'll be listening, Fred Castillo. Again, Fred, first and foremost, thank you for being a member of the Supervillain Squad, man, on Patreon. I appreciate you so much. Uh, I'll tell you all how you can become a member of the squad as well. Heather, what you think? Who's better prepared for all this when it's all said and done? Well, yeah, I, I agree with him. I think DC is probably uh, they can they can get some gains right now because they they're not nobody's anticipating anything from them. That's the good thing about being the underdog. Nobody's anticipating. People are are anticipating, you know, Marvel two, Spider Man three, and you know, uh, Black Widow, and nobody's anticipating. I mean, Wonder Woman is probably going to be interesting to see how they do that because that one definitely was on track to do a billion. Mm-hmm. You know, so that that was probably going to hurt. If they can't, if they can't figure out how to get their money another way, but I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with I'm with Fred. Yeah, I agree. I agree. This is a time when being the being the I think that's what we're gonna see across all these industries. The the down the the underdogs are the ones that are about to emerge because if you if even if you look at the way people are running their cities, the it's the underdog mayors are the ones that are stepping up saying smart stuff. It's the underdog governors that are now in the spotlight. The ones you never knew their names, you know their names now. So I just I do I definitely think this is. This is definitely the season to get some gains if you if you were ready. If you were ready. All right. So I'm gonna take the opposite route. Okay. And I'm gonna say Marvel. Here's why. I understand they are trying to stay with their timelines. I get it. And the only reason, the only reason a lot of stuff just got pushed back recently is because of Sony. The only reason. I think because of the fact of the anticipation is something that will never hurt them. People are going to go see and run to their products no matter what. They have proven it. They have proven that no matter what they put out, people are going to watch it. Whether you they love it, hate it, or hate watch it, or hate pay to go see it, they are going to do that. Yeah, I get the underdogs. Nobody's expecting anything. I get that. But at the same time, you've got this long list of things that everybody knows is about to happen. I don't think this is going to last extra months because of one thing. Hollywood being shut down affects more than just Hollywood. It affects a lot in a grand scheme of things because Hollywood isn't just Hollywood anymore. It's Atlanta. It's Austin. It's Seattle. It's New Orleans. It's North Carolina. It's all these other towns now that need these shows and projects to be happening for their mm-hmm. communities to bring in revenue. So that's one of the reasons I do not think this is going to last long. They're going to push away to get these projects going back running. Tyler Perry just announced he's about to start retaping Sisters in July. He owns his own production studio. Atlanta, Georgia as a whole is open. And well, no matter what people may think, people are going to want to go to work for him. Well, it's like you said, if, if these are the scenes where you don't need a lot of extras, where you don't need background crowds and things, they, they can just quarantine the cast and knock those out. You know, while you're here, you know, we're going to quarantine you guys so that we can get this done. The, the problem, the challenge for these kinds of films, these blockbuster films, is going to be the extras. So once they solve that problem, even if it's just CGI and extras or taking extras from old films and, and doing something amazing with technology, once they solve that problem, they can all go back to work. Yeah, I agree. And that's what's about to happen. Like, for instance, when it comes to Canada. Canada has already said because they're they're ready to go back, right? Canada's like, yo, we need to start shooting because again, they understand. See, I understand people keep saying, well, well, why why does the economy have to be so important? Look, at the end of the day, the money stimulating that moves to help things go, it helps people's way of lives. I understand yeah. people to bring the universal basic income and all these different things, but at, until we get to that point, 
which we aren't anytime soon. We got to realize the way in which money moves things has to be done. It just has to be done. Canada is now going to have it where if you're an actor, an American actor, and you come up to Canada to film, soon they're going to have you in two weeks early because what they're going to do is they're going to automatically te- check your temperature. And yeah. no matter what your temperature is, they're going to quarantine you 14 yeah. days off jump. Yeah. Bam. Then you can go because once you've done the 14 days, if you got it, if you've had it or you just get if you're getting over whatever, you're going to run it out. If you yeah. just got it again, it's two. It's and for most people. If you're a healthy person overall, it's two weeks in your system anyway. Yeah. So it's, you're just gonna suffer a little bit, but you're gonna go through it. So what they'll do is they'll have that, and then they'll go back to productions. This is not going. I think people got it. I know people are like, "Yo, we want to make sure everybody's safe, and we got a vaccine." Because it takes a year or so almost to develop a for sure solid vaccine. You are not gonna stop everything from moving. You just aren't. Yeah. You just aren't. Yeah, they're so, gonna, we're going to start putting up our weaker people. I think older actors are probably going to not be used as much because yep. they're higher risk and they're going to get younger actors. They're going to change. It's going to change the way we tell stories, the way we write scenes, you know, but I definitely think they're going to they're going to come up with a solution because it's a billion dollar industry. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. You're not about and, to just freeze up billions of dollars. And people keep being like, oh, it's just these Hollywood elites and blah, blah, blah. Like, again, you don't. Get a lot of people who say that do not get it. This is not just about Los Angeles. This yeah. is not just about the left coast. Hollywood not running means shit in New York sometimes doesn't run. Right. right. So pe- people forget about that. So uh, the reason I say Marvel, because they have all this stuff. And as soon as they get the go ahead, because guaranteed they've already been in contact with all of their stars. They've already been in contact with all of their actors to, to find out if they're willing to do it or not. And they'll go accordingly. Like if you're a star of a show, they know they got to wait until you're ready. That's it's just a given. But well, at the same I'm pretty time, sure. I'm pretty sure the, the movie companies had a pandemic response team in place before the American government did. I guarantee oh, absolutely. that. Oh, absolutely. You know, <laughs> they probably, they have probably worked out 75 different scenarios. Which which scenes can we which scenes can we yep. shoot? What, what can, can we, we say? What can't we say? Yep. What do we need to rewrite? Yeah. What, what right. do we need to do? So they've been doing that, and so that's gonna run. But like I said, the the industry itself doesn't just affect Hollywood. When when these when these movie companies and TV companies come to little small cities to film projects, that's money in those communities that right. need it. So right. it's it's bigger than everything and so I think Marvel having all of this stuff that's ready to go is going to put a lot of money into various states and countries economies. So I give it again, the end of the summer at least there is talk about this possibly happening again come the fall because they know it'll possibly cuz it'll be cuz now we have it. But yeah. before then, they are going to put so much out that they can go ahead and start Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the first to drop. They yeah. only need to film a few more scenes for them to be done. Right, right. But they'll have the whole season in the can. So when they knock that out, it's like, boom, they done. You know what I'm saying? So I get what, like I said, I get what both of you all are saying with DC. Nobody's expecting anything. You know, only thing we know for a fact that's coming out for sure is Wonder Woman 2. And we, we also know it's done. We know it's done. And we know it's done. Yeah, we, so we it's, know- just, it's just a matter of how they're going to collect that revenue. Right. But when it comes to Aquaman 2, The Trench, Shazam 2, Black Adam, all them other movies, even the DC projects, all those, we just know they're in, we know they're in their pre-production phases. They hadn't started filming. That's a whole different ballgame. Black game. Adam had started filming. He went in pre-production. I don't think he had officially started filming. I'm not, I might be wrong. You might be right. I might be wrong on that one. They've been talking about Black Adam for, what, three years? Yeah, well, to, longer than that. It, can we get it done, please? Well, only because once Shazam made all that money coming mm-hmm. out the gate, he hurried up and rushed production on it. So, but again, thank you for it for a question that stimulated a lot of good conversation. I got one more question. It's a listener okay. question. It says, Hey Jay, Joe from Philly here. And I hope you're keeping safe and healthy with both body and mind in these trying times. My question is, is Hollywood's dedication to trying to make Batman feel series serious, excuse me, anti-ethical to the premise of the character? Do they realize he's a man that dresses like a bat and uses acrobats and martial arts to fight villains, which include a guy that wears que- wears question marks and tells riddles, guy that looks like a clown, a literal crocodile man, a walking pile of clay, a woman that dresses like a cat, and so many more. Like, is this inherently is this an inherently silly premise, right? Also, is there going to be serious going to end up too serious that it ends up being silly in a laughable way, i.e. Batman v Superman. 
So that's from Joe. First of all, thank you, Joe. Appreciate this one. This is a good one. Joe, go take a jump into a lake. Okay, Joe. Don't do that. We don't, we don't need you to tell us that it's ridiculous. We know it's ridiculous, Joe. It's the bat. Shut up. We just take it. <laughs> you know you can't argue with Batman fans. Because, again, I agree with you. Like, yo, some of Batman's greatest villains are the most weird shit ever. Okay, here's the thing that we have to understand about Batman. And I get it. You guys don't know this. Batman was, was uh, when, they were, when they were designing Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, they, they uh, consulted with psychologists. Um, to help develop the characters because they want to make sure that the characters would be entertaining and interesting to the market they were pursuing, which was children. Okay. <laughs> when they were doing this, they didn't expect us to, they didn't expect those children to grow up and still love these people. Um, they, they wrote these characters for kids. And when you're a kid, you don't think that deep into it. So it's like, yeah, he's clay, but they, you, you, you explained how he became clay. We're buying it. And then that guy became a grandfather and his kids became grownups. And it was like, yeah, no, we still, we still fuck with the bad and the clay, even though, so we're kind of, we're kind of vested into the ridiculousness of the whole premise of Gotham city. Um, so we don't think that hard about it. We're just, and we're just not, we're not about to start, but we need the bat to be somewhere in between. Um, obviously Harley Quinn is taking a very comical approach to Gotham city. Um, Adam West took a, watered down silly approach with the bang zooms but even that was done so that it would pass the the censors because they didn't want to scare the kids with too much fighting that's the only reason the bangs and the zooms came into play uh because it was they wanted it to be more serious too Mm -hmm. so i mean this is just this is just what it is i mean it's ridiculous that that uh twilight has sparkling vampires it's ridiculous that spiegel you know is not a human and he's this little thing that wants rings i mean all these little fake universes have a element of ridiculous that's what you suspend when you enter the universe and you just accept it for what it is all right can no I say something? Joe. Joe, you don't have to jump in the lake I, I, okay can you i can i dry. say can i say something without you c- c- cutting down my throat because it's going to be somewhat positive but uh, might be taken as anti-dc i, I mean, agree you say that's your own risk jay uh, no shit uh wow here we go dc has always presented itself as a darker toned universe that's just it is what it is it is always Batman himself has always been presented as a darker tone character, even with these, <clears throat> excuse me, with these ridiculous, damn it, my throat, I got something in my throat and I can't clear it out. Because of what you're saying? Because of what you're saying? <laughs> even with the ridiculous uh, rogues gallery that he does have, you know what I'm saying? When it, it gets lighter when it comes to the Flash, the Flash's rogue galleries just seem so comical and lighthearted. Even though when you look at Batman's rogues gallery, you're like, yo, a walking pile of clay a legit man bat you know what i'm saying but i think when you try to go serious you can take it super serious and you can go too far i do agree with the sometimes it coming off kind of stupid like what people say about baby superman because everybody's like well you gotta watch the director's cut you gotta watch the full three hours and you'll understand it better no it was, it was way better it was way better though I, I still believe in this if i you didn't show it to me in the theaters oh i agree you should got it right the first time should yeah, got it right I the first agree. time yeah i don't i don't think it'll be comical i think no matter what this is what i think at the end of the day let me just sum all to say this at the end of the day i believe people are going to be mad at robert pattinson for one way or another no matter what he does yeah i do too I think no matter what he does, no matter how he portrays Bruce Wayne and Batman, no matter what, people are going to be upset. People are going to find a way to be mad. People are going to find a way to say, see, I knew he shouldn't have been Batman, no matter what he does. So I think that's a problem. That's something we got to accept for for what it is. No matter what, people are going to find criticism in this movie, just like people found criticism in Joker. Yes, I know Joker crossed a billion dollars, but at the same time, people were sitting there trying to nitpick Joker. It's going to happen. So I don't think we can take seriousness and silliness into consideration with these movies. We just got to see it and see what it does. Well, I think also the difference between the Marvel successful films, with the exception of uh, Spider-Man, which we know was, you know, an independent deal. Um, you have uh, you have people playing two roles. You know, you have you got to You got to find an actor that could be a good Batman and a good Bruce Wayne, Mm -hmm. a good Clark Kent and a good Superman, a good Peter Parker and a good Spider-Man. And to me, they never really are. The only person that really did, you know, Christopher Reeve, Christopher Reeve did both brilliantly, but he also was a 
theatrically trained actor. Like people just sleep on how good of an actor and how well trained he was. For the most part, you're not going to get, especially with the Batmans. I don't think we've seen one Batman that we love. Christian Bale, but again, a very seriously trained actor um, who could do both brilliantly. Well, so I think some people had a problem with his Batman. Like his Bruce Wayne was like, yeah, okay. His, his Bruce Wayne was great. Uh -huh. uh, his Batman wasn't as, as lovable. Rob Pattinson would probably be a great Bruce Wayne because he, he can pull off handsome, rich, debonair. We got to see what this Batman going to do. This nigga don't want to do no sit-ups. So <laughs> we got to see what this Batman going to do. Ah! You know what I mean? <laughs> so we got to see what that's going to be. But I just think, I think uh. it's a lot more difficult. I think with the DC unit, like with Batman, to me, the animated series makes it very easy for me to take because I was a kid. You know, I watched that as a kid. So to me, it's very easy for me to accept the darkness in spite of the ridiculousness of the rogues gallery. Flash is silly. Flash was always silly. Bruce was never silly. That's what made the killing joke amazing. Bruce, y'all got Batman to laugh for the first time in 90 years. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, that's just a, you can't, you can't have it both ways. These are the characters. These are who they are. And they all have the, the difference between uh, Flash's rogues, uh, the difference between Spider-Man's villains is that every single one of Batman's major villains got there through a crazy way. It's like, well, how could he be anything but the Joker? They threw him in a vat of acid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, how, yeah. Could, how could Clayface be anything but my God? He just was trying, he was vain. And look what happened because he was just trying to stay young looking to make his movie. So it's like when you see what they've been through, Edward Nigma, you totally, I mean, low key, you on his side. Like they 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 dogged that. They dogged that Edward Nigma. He getting everybody back for all the whole shit. He went through his whole life because he was smart and you know he was getting dogged out and bullied his whole life. Finally he snapped and was like, I'm fucking everybody up. The suits are <laughs> ridiculous. Of course the suits are ridiculous, but Again, they were drawings, guys. No, you know, it wouldn't have been as interesting on a two-dimensional platform like a 10-cent comic book if he'd have had a gray suit on. The, the green and the question marks made him interesting from that perspective. So that's what we're stuck with now. And it's like, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think we overthink a little bit of it. It's easy to be Tony Stark and Iron Man when Tony Stark is Iron Man and everybody knows he's the same person. He's literally the same person the whole movie. He doesn't have to change it up. He doesn't have to change his voice. He doesn't have to deceive anybody. And there's always a huge element of deception with these other comic books. Even Wonder Woman, I mean, she doesn't wear a mask or nothing, you know? <laughs> like, Which is weird. Like, every, know, like, how do people not know Diana Prince is Wonder Woman? I never understood that one. And I think I think it's mostly because of the way she lives. She's an art restorer. She's kind because of, when Linda Carter did it, she did wear glasses and she kept her hair pinned up. So there right. was a, a kind of a disguise because she was more in the public's eye. Diana Prince work in a museum in Paris. She ain't coming out the house. <laughs> You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're not seeing her. So it's I, like, whatever. But I'm looking forward to the 2020. I mean, 1984 uh, movie in 2020. I love it, man. I appreciate. First of all, I appreciate your email, uh, Joe and Heather. I let you a, just go. I was like, yo, I'm letting her just do this. I'm gonna let her go. A, it was a good. It was a good question, Joe. It that, needed to be. It needed to be said. And that was a great answer. Listen, that wraps up this episode 59 of the Mad Titan Podcast. Thank you, everybody that listened. Please, wherever you're listening from right now, rate and review this episode. Rate and review this episode, man. And uh, this is how we get it higher in the algorithm. Y'all already know how it is. Before I give you my plugs, I'm gonna let Heather give hers and let people know how they can find and reach her. Okay, my name is Heather J. Um, I'm Heather J on all social media platforms. H-E-A-T-H-E-R-J-A-Y letter H um, on everything. So I have a YouTube channel. I occasionally do reviews too. I might do one for um, I might do one for I might, I, might, I might jump back into doing some since we got some new stuff getting ready to drop out for the summer. And IG, Twitter, Facebook, everything. You can always, if you follow uh, my Facebook page, I always discuss uh, comic book uh, releases in a thread somewhere on my page. So definitely come to the page and uh, we'll get some good conversations going. And it's open. So even if you don't want to follow me, you can always just come in and, and, and speak your mind. It's a safe space for people such as myself <laughs> that maintain the dichotomy of being both fabulous and well-versed in comics. <laughs> Go on there with your bad self. Go on there with your bad ass. All right. I appreciate you much. Listen, y'all already know the drill. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Mr. J Washington. M R J A Y. You should know how to spell Washington. Uh, tweet out Juke and Media and tell them to un 
unrele- tell them to release their bullshit copyright claim from Blurts in the Hood, episode 17, which you can catch right now on the Blurts in the Hood channel, youtube.com slash Blurts in the Hood, so I can have my fucking Facebook page back open and ain't got to wait three damn days. Already stressed out with my laptop not being able to work because my charger ain't shit, so I don't need all this pressure. Also, please join my super villain squad on Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. J Washington. I put a bunch of stuff up on there and I put random questions up there. Like the most recent question I had up for discussion is what are we supposed to judge actors on? And this literally goes back to Robert Pattinson because people are steadily going off of Twilight as opposed to his entire filmography career. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just say one role if he has more than one role because clearly there were other roles that made this, the director say that he could be that person. That whole discussion is available on the Patreon. Speaking of members of the squad, I want to thank you all right now. So thank you to Adelia Chamberlain, Akeem J. King J. Brown, Alberto Rios, AZ Badfish, Blue 87 Jones, Brandon Buckingham, California Joe, Christopher Connolly, Kasi Lobe, David Adams, DJ Snacks, Fanboy Cantina, Fillmore Pockets, Fred Castillo, Greg Morshi, Hank Staley, Jake Icavetta, James Smart, Jeffrey Chadorn, Jim Mason, John Mariano, LK, Marcus Kennedy, Marcus Burton, Mikey Lito, Paisley Darts, Randy Constance, Rudy Ueda, Samir Tisfai, Steve Tozen, and the Prince That Wasn't Promise. Thank you all for being members of the squad and supporting your boy. You don't know how much that means, and I am so grateful for you all, all right? And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jayywashington80. I got a bunch of new reviews up there, man. I reviewed Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. It's up there. I also reviewed Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion Revenge. That shit was good. And I talked about that <laughs> as well. So also you got some different ones. You got Hollywood on Netflix. I reviewed I reviewed Extraction on Netflix and Black AF because I finally just said I'm going to do this. And so I did it. And now we'll see what happens with my career. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, and like I said, y'all, Blurs in the Hood every Tuesday live on YouTube. Blurs in the Hood, youtube.com slash B-L-E-R-D-S, the letter N-T-H-E-H-O-O-D, every Friday on my YouTube channel. The Harley Quinn reviews drop, myself and Winston A. Marshall. Like I said, next Tuesday on Blurs in the Hood, we will have an interview with one of the showrunners, Joe Hal- Justin Halpern, excuse me, of Harley Quinn. So stay tuned for that, all right? I appreciate you all for listening and rocking with your boy each and every week. I will holler at you guys next time. Take care. I'm out of here. Bye.